Hey everybody, and welcome back to another Quick Tie. My name is Tim Hepworth, and this Quick Tie is brought to you by Western Canada Fly Fishing Guide School. If you want to look that up, you can see the website on the bottom here. Go take a peek if that's something you're interested in. Um, today we're going to be tying the Pewterboro Caddis, and this is coming out of, <clears throat> sorry, season six and episode three. You can see the fly down below there. That's what we're going to be tying up today. Don't forget though, like and subscribe to this video. If you go ahead and do that and you click the little bell icon, every time we have another video come out every week, you're gonna be able to uh, see that again. So whether you're tying out of our season six kit, which is what I'm gonna be doing today, or whether you're tying out of our individual kits, nothing changes, all the materials are gonna be there for you. And if you don't have the materials, um, or you don't have our kits, but you have the materials, head on over to our website, www.flyfishingboarder.com backslash TNL6 and all the fly recipes um, for all of our flies are there and you'll see this one there as well. Okay, why don't we take a head over to the vise to take a peek at this fly and uh, then we'll get working on it. This is the Peterborough Caddis. So this guy, we're, uh, we're tying it quite small um, today. So this is gonna be uh, about a size 16. So a little bit of a challenge in that we're working with quite a bit smaller hook shank, um, but pretty simple pattern. We can get a lot in on this one and it's kind of the first time in this season we're gonna be working with hackle. Um, and we'll go over some of that as well. So go ahead, open up your kit, um, get your next hook in the vise, and we will get started. Set that guy aside. Be very careful with these tiny little hooks because they're very easy to get lost. Make sure you have it good and secured as we have uh, such a small hook shank, always give it a little check and make sure that it's not gonna move around on you. And then <clears throat> for this fly, I'm gonna be tying, um, I got some like, it's called a golden brown and this is in a UTC 70. So we're gonna want something a little bit smaller on this one. A tan would also be appropriate um, for a color, but you want something a little smaller because you'll see real quick if we put too much um, thread on this hook shank, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna build up in a big hurry and we don't have a lot of space to work with. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna start this thread just behind the eye and I'm gonna start by laying a few thread wraps back. I'll clip out that tag in. And I'm gonna take this all the way back to the bend of the hook. And when we get there, I'm gonna go just a smidge into the, into the curve edge of that hook. Um, kind of the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, pre-cut our foam so it's ready for us because we're gonna need it kind of at a drop of a hat in the next couple steps. So you're gonna see you have a, a piece of two mil foam. It's kind of in this peach tan color, uh, really nice. What I want you to do is, you know, basically guess off of the hook shank cut it at you know one and a half lengths or so not super specific um, but what we do need to do is we need to trim this down a bit so this is going to be significantly too wide for this fly so I'm going to come in here with my scissors I'm going to take off a good two mils at least maybe three so I'm left with something that's about three mils in width be something like that okay, I'm happy with that kind of width Keeping it as consistent as possible is gonna kind of be the best, but you'll see we're only gonna use about that much of the foam. So we're using a very little piece. Now on the, the side that I just cut, you're gonna have a flat end. I want you to come in here and just shape up the corners, makes it look a little bit more realistic. So I'm just taking just the very corners off of it, kind of blunts it out on the edges. And this is kind of how, be the shape that we're gonna tie in. So I can set this aside. We're gonna come back to it in a second. Um, you'll see in your kit as well, we have this tan dubbing. Now, when I say a wisp, I mean a wisp. We're gonna use very, very little of this. We're gonna make a quick little dubbing noodle. And as we've talked about in the past, dubbing noodle, I come in and I'm twisting that onto the thread in one motion in the same direction. We don't wanna go back and forth because that'll ravel and unravel it. So I'm just basically gonna take just a little bit off of here. Not very much at all. Kind of pull it out, just take a little bit of that. I'm gonna pull my thread out so I can see it like this. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit at a time. So you can see I kind of spread it out on there um, and I'm just gonna twist it so it's nice and thin. This is basically just enough dubbing to cover up your thread, okay? And now what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna take a couple of thread wraps down into that bend, get that first bit of dubbing to connect. Basically gonna do one wrap, two wrap, and that should leave me somewhere around that hook barb. I'll go one more. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my foam that I pre-cut, okay? Now I'm gonna take this foam and I'm gonna lay it right on top of the hook shank. I want it to extend off the back of the fly just a little way. So if I go too far, you can see it kind of looks unnatural. I'm looking for about a third of the hook shank in length is, is gonna be what's hanging off. So if I kind of rough measure, be about, a, about right there, 
I'm gonna switch hands so I can hold that in place. And now with the dubbing on here, I'm gonna go right up and over the foam, pinching the foam on top and squeezing down so that it doesn't roll the foam on top. I'm gonna do three wraps only. Don't wanna overdo it. I should be left with something that looks like that. And on the underside, you can see we've kind of created a nice little uh, segmentation of the back portion of the fly. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this back and I'm gonna start taking some thread wraps forward. Once I run out of dubbing, that's fine. I'm gonna go back to my clump of dubbing again. I'm gonna put, again, just another little wisp. We don't need a ton here. We're just basically covering up the, the thread that we put on there. If we need to pull a little bit off, we can as well. And then I'm just gonna work this forward. So what we're gonna leave here at the front for space, we're gonna try to leave about a third of the hook shank. So somewhere right about there. So I've got too much. This stuff is a super fine dubbing, uh, meant for dry fly so you can pull it off really easy. We do wanna have some nice consistency to the amount of dubbing we have under, in the underbody, but the foam will kinda of come in, in circumference around the hook a little bit. So it's not the end of the world if it's not super even. At this point, I'm gonna lay my foam back down I'm gonna kind of hold it out like that. I'm gonna go ahead and take a thread wrap up and over. I can kind of regrip it, pull it down, and I've got my front segmentation on this foam. So I'll lift that up. I'll do a couple of thread wraps in front of it. And then what I wanna do is I wanna kind of pull that foam forward a bit, and I'm gonna cut it at a shallow angle, basically using the angle of the eye of the hook that it's coming up, and that's where I'm gonna cut it. So I'm, the goal here is to leave a little bit of the foam because it's gonna create our ramp for us because I'm gonna, you can see that angle I've left on there. So now when I come like this, I'm gonna tighten all that foam down onto the hook shank. It's gonna create a little ramp forward because this is where we're gonna put in some deer hair and then we're gonna put in our hackle. So this is what we should be left with at this point. Okay, that's the underside. Nice looking caddis underbody. And we're at this point. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with our deer hair. Now we're gonna take just a very little bit. We're gonna be somewhere in that neighborhood of a, like a half of a pencil width. For whatever reason, that's kind of how we measure, like very little. And once we stack it um, and pull out all the under fur, we're left with even a little bit less. I like to leave it nice and long though. Don't cut those butts off. Pinch the tips, pull out that under, under fur. Make sure you get that all out of there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and stick that in a hair stacker. Okay, it's gonna come in here, tips first. We wanna stack up those tips. So I got that all in there. I'll give a couple wraps on the table. And when I pull it out, I wanna make sure that the underside here, the bottom, is pointed back down the fly. So I'm gonna swivel it over, pull it out, and there's my tips, okay? So I'm gonna come in with my non-dominant hand. I'm gonna grab those tips. And I'm gonna switch hands real quick, make sure that those look fairly stacked. If you got any of them that are kind of hanging on their own, you can go ahead and pull those out. Now we wanna make sure we keep those tips aligned. So I'm gonna go back and forth with my fingers a bit, but what I wanna do is eventually have it in my bobbin hand so that I can come and brace it, my fingertips up against uh, the hook eye and I can lay this back and I can get my measurements. So that's exactly where I want it. I want it to extend just beyond the back of the foam. So once I'm in this position, I need to switch hands again. So I'm gonna come in here, you can see my measurement now I'm gonna come back over with my other hand and I'm gonna pinch that so it stays up on top. Now I want to pre-trim this off. I don't wanna trim it afterwards. So I'm gonna come in and cut it off at a little bit of an angle just short of the hook eye. Trim it like so, you can see that angle there. And then I'm gonna give, <clears throat> I'm left-handed. So in this motion, I'm gonna spin my bobbin clockwise. That's gonna cause my thread to jump backwards onto that. If you're right-handed, you're gonna do it the opposite direction. So do a counterclockwise spin that's gonna jump back on top of those threads. I'm gonna take a couple of loose wraps. I'll show you what that looks like there. You can see I'm through that, but there's still some little um, pieces of hair. So then I wanna work my thread through that hair all the way through, making sure it's pinched down. And then I'm just gonna continue to work on that ramp. This is gonna be for our hackle. And then I'm gonna leave my thread right up against that deer hair. And that deer hair should stand up for you, just like that. It's gonna be our wing. And if you have any little bits, like you can see if I flip it over, I got a couple little pieces of hair that didn't get trapped down. Just go ahead and clip those out now. So if you're like me, it'll drive you nuts if they're still on there. And now what I'm gonna do from this point, um, I'm gonna do a quick half hitch. So I'm gonna do a little bit of save work here, just the save button, make sure I can't go anywhere. I've got to this point. Um, and now I'm gonna go over and pick up the hackle that I'm gonna be working with. So in your kit, you're gonna have probably a couple pieces of hackle. 
we've kind of the best we could got the right size for you so if i were to test this out on top i'm going to see it's going to be the appropriate size it's roughly that hook gap and width that's kind of how we would measure for this hook shank now you're going to see there's an underside it's the dull colored side versus the shiny side and the shiny side is what we um, call the top so when i tie this in I need the underside or the dull side to be back down the fly. So the underside there, I need that to be pointed back down the fly so that when I start to wrap, this is gonna orient properly and help the barbs of that feather to stand up. But the first thing I wanna do is I wanna come in here and prepare the hackle. So what that means is I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna pinch some of those off so I can expose some of the stem. Now, the next thing I wanna do is the direction that I actually choose to wrap this and I know for me, I'm gonna peel some off the bottom side of the, of the feather. I'm gonna take a few more, maybe a dozen or so, and pull them off the bottom. Now, I'll show you why that's important here in a second, but that's gonna be the underside. Because when I start wrapping, that bare stem is gonna allow that hackle to start um, unraveling in the right direction and help the barbs to stand up just like we want them to. So the next thing I gotta do is tie this in. So I'm gonna remember to keep the underside pointed back down the fly. I'm gonna come in here right up against that deer hair. I'm gonna tie that hackle in and then I'm gonna work that down my ramp so I know that it's extremely locked in and not going anywhere. And then lay some thread wraps there. Because all that can be slippery and the hackle wants to move around on it so once I get it kind of locked in there and check the underside, looks like it's all completely in. Now at this point what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do another half hitch so I'm gonna kind of break out my half hitch tool this time. So we've talked about it, but you often have a hole that'll be on the end of your whip finish tool like this. Same idea, this is just a little tool. It's got a couple of different sizes on it. So I'll pick the smaller size. I'm gonna wrap my thread around it just once. It's just the, the quick half hitch and I stick it over the eye. Just a really easy way to work with these smaller dry flies. Now I'm gonna set my bobbin over on the bobbin cradle just so it's out of my way. And what I like to do here when I'm wrapping hackle, just to make sure, especially when you got a ramp like this and it might be a little slippery, is I like to take my hook and tip it up a little bit. And it kind of helps orient that hackle as you're going down. I got one hair here that's kind of driving me nuts. We'll see if it'll sit back for us. So now I left that bare side of the stem on the underside here. So when I start to wrap, I wanna wrap so that that is the very first thing that makes contact is the bare portion of the stem. So that gives me that half a wrap for it to start standing up in the right direction first. And now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna palmer this forward. You're probably gonna end somewhere in that like four to five turns, you're gonna get in. Take it all the way up to the eye. I'm gonna pull it up, pull the feather back towards myself and bring my thread back in. Now you're gonna probably find that it feels a little convoluted up here as you tie this off, but we'll kind of show you how to fix some of that here in a second. So I'm gonna make sure that my thread goes behind the stem that I'm holding. I'm gonna bring it back up, go over top and back behind again. So when we're securing that material, we always wanna go behind and front, behind and front. And once I get to that point, I'm gonna pull back as much of that hackle as I can, get a couple of thread wraps right up at the eye. And then from here, you can see there's a few hackles that are kinda of right out the front of the fly, that's fine. Don't even worry about that, we'll trim them out. But I'm gonna go back to my half hitch tool I'm gonna do, this time I'm gonna go around it twice. I'm gonna stick it over the edge of the eye. And the reason I like this tool is because I can push that hackle back away from the eye as I cinch that knot down. And it really helps to clean up the head of the fly. I'm gonna do it one more time. You definitely could add some resin here if you're a little nervous about your knot, but a couple of those should secure it just fine. I'm gonna come in here and trim out my thread. I'm gonna set that aside. And all I gotta really do is I gotta trim out um, this hackle, so I'll turn it up just so I can see a little better. I'm gonna get in here nice and close, trim it out, set it aside, and then I just want you to go take a peek at your fly. If there's any hair that's that, that one hair for me is gonna drive me nuts, so I'm gonna go ahead and take that one out. You wanna preserve as much of that hackle as you can, and as you can see, the head of that fly actually ended up cleaning up really nice. We didn't really have any hackle um, sticking out the front once I put the half hitch tool over it, and we're left with that. That is the Pewterboro Caddis. A very good caddis, um, got to fish it this last year quite a bit. Um, super effective and that little bit of extra foam really helps that fly stay up in a little bit rougher water. As we know, our classics like Elker caddis and um, X caddis, things like that, they tend to sink with only having hair, um, but the foam really, really helps out. Okay guys, that has been the Peterborough caddis um, from season six, episode three. 
Don't forget to like and subscribe to this video. Um, we want to know that you guys are there. Drop a comment if you if you do watch the video because we appreciate feedback. And we want to know if you're part of the replay squad. All that means is you're here to watch the quick tie and we want to know that you did. Okay guys, until next week, we'll be back with another great fly and we'll see you then.